Hello everyone, welcome back to today's video. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how I draw one of my fashion designs that you guys saw last week. So, if you weren't here last week, I showed everyone some of the drawings for my book. And this week, I'm going to actually show you guys the process of making one. So, let's go. Okay, so I believe I just called this a croaky, which is the actual name, and that does sound very weird, croaky, C-R-O-Q-U-I-S, very weird name for it, but a croaky is basically this outline of a person, a person that doesn't have any, like, clothes on, that's just the layout, and this is where I do my rough drafts, so over this I will draw pants, a skirt, a top, whatever, um, and then after this you, um, trace over it, which I will go into better depth later. And so then you trace over it, then you can choose what lines you draw, because obviously you don't want all of these lines in your good copy. Um, and then after that, when you have your good copy with all the right lines that you want for the outfit, then you color it and then you finish it. So this is my female croquis. This is my preferred female croquis. I really like this one because, um, you know, the legs are straight, the arms are straight, um, but like it's not, this is very basic. It's not a pose or anything. Whereas this one and other ones, you know, the hips are kind of like, they're, they're posing. So drawing um, on poses can be harder because you have to do like angles and stuff and like how it would look with this person walking, which is a lot harder then, you know, when you just have like a basic croquis like, and then I also have this male croquis that I have written all over because this, this is a rough draft. So on both of these, there are two people on both, um, piece of paper. Some only have like one. Um, obviously this one has a front and a back, which is helpful. Um, so this is a rough draft of a design that I drew and this is my preferred male croquis because again, it is is mostly basic. It's hard to get it completely straight sometimes because obviously there are different characteristics about a croquis that I like and dislike. Um, this one, I really like that it has a front and a back. I typically don't draw the back, but if there are some details that I feel are very um, relevant and that like are very important, then I will draw a back. Okay, so now I'm actually going to draw, um, create a design for you guys today. Um, again, I'm going to try to keep the paper in frame as much as possible, and I'm also going to be trying to draw from a distance, where usually I am up close, looking more closely at the lines just to make sure that everything's right. I have my lucky, uh, mechanical pencil that I always use because it is extra sharp, and I don't have to worry about sharpening a pencil, so that's nice. I always get the lines, you know, as sharp as possible. Okay, so I was just looking, and I don't have any other uh, female croquis where the arms are out more. So, I'm thinking, I'm trying to remember what my design was, because I had an idea for it. Um, it kind of, if I can show you on this side, it kind of just goes like, out like this, kind of like a leaf or something. The This doesn't look very good, this is just a... A rough sketch if I didn't use a croquis then all of my designs would literally look like that. I made my decision after just doing a few lines on this model I've decided that I'm going to go over to this model because even though only one arm is out it will still look better and I'm still hoping a lot that this design will work and look good. The idea is good, again, it's just drawing it, whether I can draw it the right way, with the right depth, and the right shape. Mm -hmm. 
I'm working on the kind of skirt so far. And the idea is that when she has her arms like 45 to like 90 degrees away from her body, um, it'll kind of be like her skirt divides in half and pulls out. So it'll, it'll look like I said here where it'll just be like comes out. Um, so that's what I have right now. But obviously it's splitting like right up here. So when her arms are like all the way out, she'll need like shorts or like a little um, mini skirt underneath just to, you know, cover that up. Um, but I don't think in this picture that will be visible because of how, again, close her arms are to her body and how droopy it is. Um, still not entirely sure what to do with the top. Um, obviously it won't have super long sleeves because there are these cuffs at the bottom. And this design is also similar to what I did with that wedding dress outfit that I showed you guys. Where it's the cuffs and it's like connected, except it's a bit different because it droops down more. Gravity is working for this one and it makes it look good. I've decided what to do for the top. So I had this other idea um, for another outfit to do a big puffy shoulder with some like tight small sleeves um, stuff for a top. So I'm going to take that idea and apply it to the top for this outfit. Which just goes to show that sometimes you just put two ideas together and you make a whole outfit. Okay, so here's where the idea changes and evolves. So, as I was trying to draw a uh, scrunched up kind of shoulder, kind of like what you see... Disney princesses wearing kind of like olden day stuff, but I wanted it to go a bit like longer and stuff into the arm. Um, and I've also decided to do full uh, length sleeves that kind of just like hug the arm, but don't like obviously like cut off circulation. Um, they'll go straight into the um, cuffs and those will just blend in nicely. Um, but as I was trying to draw this uh, scrunched up shoulder, I realized that I couldn't really draw it. So I have this kind of like circle because I was trying to draw like the shape of it and then kind of like get into texture more later. Um, and so I'm kind of just um, debating with myself whether I should do a shoulder like this and I can just trace that over and copy it over here or like what I had a bit before where it looked like it was just kind of like a pom-pom kind of stuff around the shoulder. Like that looks kind of cool too. And it's just kind of like those um, kind of like tassels that you see on the shoulder. But like really fluffy. So I pulled out my handy dandy tracing paper that you can see there are still many other drawings from other outfits on there. It's been used a lot, that's good. So what I basically do is I just stick the tracing paper over the little section that I want to get. I will trace that over, not now, but I will do it. Um, I kind of squeeze it to the corner so I have like space for obviously many other things. Then I will flip it over and I'll put it under the paper under this arm and I'll get a lay shining up so I'm able to trace it and it will all just come together. It's kind of hard to explain but just trust me it will come together. Okay so I just finished tracing this um the other shoulder. I obviously didn't um trace these little um texture lines because those will be different and I think I'll just do those with pencil crayon once I'm coloring and the camera view probably changed a bit because I had to take apart my beautiful tower so I could take this light and trace it. I think I'm just gonna have it all as one piece. It's going to hug around the body, around the midsection and torso. Um, and obviously I'm, or bleh, I should stop using that word. 
I am currently just kind of going over the lines of the croquis so that they are easier to see when I'm tracing and it's also easier to see what lines I need to draw and which lines I do not need to draw. I think that's as good as it's going to get. I could, I sometimes end up making edits on my good copy too because again this can sometimes just be hard harder to see with all the extra lines. Okay, so now I'm at my beautiful light table, and basically how I have this set up is I have two um, even layered surfaces with this piece of uh, plexiglass. But it's basically a see-through um, surface for me to use, and then I have my light down there that shines through, so I can see through my good paper and my rough copy. Um, obviously this is a bit of DIY stuff. In my fashion class, we did have a light table that was, like, it was basically, like, the light was just connected to the glass top, and it was obviously more light, and it was more advanced. So, this is just my DIY stuff. I can't, um, have the camera set up while I'm tracing, so I'm just going to trace this, and I will show you guys after. Okay, so here's what we have now. I didn't trace those little lines because those will just be kind of like um rough little things kind of just with the pencil card I don't want any pencil lines on it I think it looks really good I really like it I like kind of like the droopiness of it and the sway and the lines overall I really like it I drew some little lines there for the breasts because those typically need to be shaded but I typically forget to do that or something because I don't have lines there so I just kind of tried to draw light ones so I remember to shade there to show the woman's figure. So now I'm going to go back up to my desk and color this. So now this is what I've done using my DIY light table. I have gone from the rough copy to the good copy and you can notice quite a difference. I have like 48. I was so happy when I got these because I'm just like yes now I have like so many more options for coloring these, and this is all I really use them for, is my drawings. I don't know what color I want to use, actually. I was looking at this yesterday, and I was looking at this pretty, kind of like magenta raspberry color. I haven't used it yet. Uh, my pencil crayons are still pretty new, um, but I haven't used this color yet. Sometimes I'll test colors on my rough draft, too just to see what they look like, because they don't always look like they do. So I really like that one. It's just a nice raspberry color. The other question is like, how many colors do I want to use? I don't think I want to do any designs on this. I think I just want to keep it basic. Um, just keep plain colors. So I think I'd want to do one color for the whole dress. I also never did a neckline also not sure about that that is something that i miss um that's typically pretty important because is it like i don't know i kind of imagine a turtleneck a bit because it's like um kind of like um tight long sleeves so i kind of that that's what i imagine based on color i think i'd want to do everything one color and then like the shoulders a different color so then I'll typically hold up like what looks good with magenta. There's some like some light pinks that I could use. I try to like use some stuff that I haven't used yet. If I did like white shoulders to complement the magenta dress. Okay, so I've gone back to my rough copy and I think I've made my decision that I want to do a v-neck but then a turtleneck. So I'm gonna have this white kind of underlayer that's going to create a v-neck on the purple and then like a white turtleneck. So it's still a turtleneck. It just makes it a bit different with this v-neck. So I'm going to take my trusty ruler and the reason that I went back to my rough copy and I didn't just start on my um, good copy is because I could have done on my good copy, but there's no center line like there is on here so it's easier to make that V and if I want to change like the angle or something so I don't want it to be a very deep V so I'm just gonna try this I am left-handed in case anybody was wondering and if you haven't noticed already so I 
also seem to talk a lot in these videos, and that is a-okay. So, again, deciding if I like that, if I don't. I think I want this one to be out a bit wider. That looks good to me. Then I just have to add the uh, turtleneck line. So, of course, I'm going to turn my paper so that that's just what I do. Um, so I still want you to be able to see that it's a turtleneck, so I'm just going to do it close to where you see the chin. Because even though on an actual outfit I might make it a bit higher, I still want you to see it in this design. So I'm going to go back and trace that now. So I have traced and now I'm back. Looks really good. I really like it. magenta part of the dress so I always like to start with the lightest shade possible because typically you want it darker around the edges so with your you know you can't make a darker shade lighter but you can make a lighter shade darker so that makes logical sense um, but I decided pretty off, pretty soon off that I want it to be a darker um, shade because I want it to be very like bold I don't always color the skin because you know people have different skin colors and it can be a drain on you know my pencil crayons but this time I am mainly because um this top part's supposed to be white and it's hard to tell that's white when the rest of the body is white so for this one I think I'm going to use a brown um like a brown skinned model I like that so the only thing is, is um, that the shoulders are white and I need to add some um, kind of details on them to make it look more 3D. Um, and that was kind of, you know, makes it a bit harder because they're white. So I'm just going to make the marks with my pencil. I think I'm going to resort back to my rough copy. Because my rough copy looked kind of okay. They were probably a bit shorter, a bit curved, more, um, kind of try to copy them a few more times because I don't want to resort to tracing yet. I actually didn't decide to trace it because I'm too lazy and didn't feel like all the way going back to the basement. So I just drew some lines. I'm trying to use my imagination, but I know that because it's white, it doesn't look as good as if I had used another color and was just shading lighter versions with that. But I'm done. That is it. I really like the design and that is my drawing for the day. Well that is all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed watching me create another design and go through the process of it and I hope to see you guys next week. Bye!